All right, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily, where you subscribe for a video on crypto every day. My name's Austin, and in today's video, if you're invested in Bitcoin, if you're invested in cryptocurrency in any sense at the present moment, things are heating up. We are entering very exciting times right now. Earlier today, or probably yesterday, depending on when you're watching this video, the price of Bitcoin shot past the $10,000 barrier. This was a huge psychological barrier, and we broke through it like it was nothing. In fact, look at this. Right now, Bitcoin, right now, the price of Bitcoin still skyrocketing upward. We just touched 10900 It appears we're back down to 10800 And just to offer some perspective, I think... What we're seeing right now, because this is yearly highs for Bitcoin for 2019, I think we are seeing a massive rally. And I don't mean the, the price of Bitcoin rallying. I think we're seeing a massive rally from institutions, from investors, a massive scramble right now to accumulate Bitcoin. If you're asking yourself why the price is rallying so hard, so fast, shooting right past that $10,000 barrier, I think what we're seeing right now is that there is a huge demand to buy Bitcoin. And not just old money, new money coming into the space buying Bitcoin. Why wouldn't there be? We've waited a year and a half over this last year. On ramps, fiat on ramps into Bitcoin have been built. Institutions are coming in and we're seeing that right now, $10,000, actually right now, $10,800 Bitcoin. I like it. I love it. And that's not to say that we might not have a pullback that could easily happen. That could easily happen. But there's a difference between what we think, what we feel should happen and what the charts are saying what's actually happening. And in terms of resistance, in terms of just how far Bitcoin could go, because after 10,000, there, honestly, there is little to no resistance between 10,000 and 20,000, 20,000 to the moon. I'm not just trying to drink the hopium Kool-Aid here. We can check it. We can double check our institutions interested in Bitcoin. What do you see? This is the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, GBTC Premium. And although the markets are closed right now, they probably closed right as or probably right before the the price of Bitcoin hit $10,000. Institutions were paying $13,500 to buy one Bitcoin. They were paying over a 30% premium to buy a Bitcoin. But that brings us to our main topic at hand today. With Bitcoin, let's just refresh this real quick. With Bitcoin pressing up against 11 k right now, I just want to offer some perspective on even if you can just afford to buy 0.1, 0.01, whatever it is, BTC, for that life-changing, presumably life-changing wealth, I just want to offer some perspective on the topic. So like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let's jump in. If we take a look at the total market cap, not just for Bitcoin, but for cryptocurrency in general, we just shot past the $300 billion market cap mark. Right now we're at $323 billion. And to offer that perspective, the last time that we were on our way up and we crossed that $300 billion market cap, we were right here around November of 2017. Not but 21 days later, we doubled the total market capitalization and went from $300 billion to $600 billion in 21 days. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to do this this time. Nobody can predict the future. And in fact, if you want to get technical, the real last time we hit, the last time we hit a $300 billion market cap, we shot back down. Of course, that was on our way down. Before, that was on our way up. All this was just part of the natural cycles that every market goes through. And if I had to peg where we are right now, I would guess that we're somewhere in the middle. We have way more fundamentals, way more on-ramps than we did back in 2017. And we have the market cycle that's supposedly trending up that's different than where we were in 2018. So what do you think? One thing that I will say is that we talk about nice, healthy, steady growth, which we didn't see in 2017, that high FOMO up. We talk about steady growth all the time, and we've been speculating that, well, Bitcoin's shooting up too far, too fast. But if we just zoom out and just look at crypto in general, not just Bitcoin, to me, this does look like nice, steady, healthy growth. You tell me. I will be talking to you in the comment section after this video, but the reason that I say, even if you can just afford 0.1 BC, 0.001 BTC, whatever it is, obviously invest in as much Bitcoin as you're comfortable with. But one of the reasons that I think we're seeing finally 
this massive move upwards for Bitcoin is because less than a year away, or damn close to a year away, we're going through the Bitcoin halving, which we've talked about before, where the amount of Bitcoin being mined into existence will get cut in half. And I just want to remind you that Bitcoin mining is going to go on for over 100 years from now, probably around 2140 when we're all dead, the last Bitcoin will be mined into existence. So the last Bitcoin, it's not being mined 10 years from now, 50 years from now, over 100 years from now, Bitcoin will still be mined. And as the supply faucet gets cut in half, decade after decade after decade, the price of Bitcoin will only become more valuable, presumably. And many of you have asked what's going to happen when the last Bitcoin is mined? How will the network stay secure? I mean, what's going to happen if the miners stop mining? Because how will they be rewarded after the rewards get cut to nothing in over 100 years? Well, the two basic things to realize is one, it's not going to be a surprise. We will be preparing for this, you know, a decade before probably, probably five. I mean, people will realize this is going to happen years and years in advance. So we'll have plenty of time to mentally prepare. But two, miners will still have transaction fees. And even if in 100 years, the transaction fee, let's just say it's one Satoshi, which is a hundred millionth of a Bitcoin, which right now doesn't equal much. But in 100 years, one Satoshi is going to be worth an awful lot, I think. Eventually, these transaction fees should become valuable enough, even if it is the minimum, even if it is just point or even if it is just one Satoshi will become valuable enough that miners will be encouraged to keep on mining. So while new Bitcoins will cease to come into existence, Bitcoin miners will still get paid. Something to keep in mind. Let me know what you think in the comments. And again, like the video if you're getting value. I have a few pieces of news I want to go over with you on this channel. We will always bring you the daily news, the daily doings of what is happening in the crypto space. So let's jump in. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse just revealed he is not an XRP maximalist after all. This is big news. And why is that? Well, the answer is Bitcoin is a store of value. Fielding questions during Thursday's session of Fortune's Brainstorm Finance 2019 conference revealed that the CEO of Ripple is a Bitcoin bag holder. So even the CEO of Ripple holds Bitcoin. Commenting on the multifaceted nature of the emerging cryptocurrency landscape, Garlinghouse declared, direct quote, I don't think there is going to be one cryptocurrency to rule them all. I own Bitcoin. I'm long Bitcoin. And I think Bitcoin is a store of value, so people hold it. I don't think there's going to be one single use case for crypto. And even Matty Greenspan commented, quite a turnaround for Brad Garlinghouse. Because I don't know if you remember earlier mm, this year, last year, whenever it was, Garlinghouse's comment appears as something of a 180 for the Ripple CEO who once claimed that China controlled Bitcoin. At the time, the Ripple chief highlighted the overwhelming presence of Chinese miners in the Bitcoin mining arena as part of the reasons for his assertion. And this is another reason that even if you just hold a little bit of Bitcoin, well, this is the reason that there will only ever be one Bitcoin. Because I could not see Brad Garlinghouse saying this about Litecoin. Maybe he will in the future, but I don't think I could see Brad saying this or any CEO of all these other altcoins saying this about Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, EOS. It's possible. And just to be fair, I totally agree with him. I think there will be a handful of cryptos that make it in the end. We have no clue what the future holds. And in fact, XR, or I should say Ripple, just had a pretty big partnership with MoneyGram earlier this week. And while I'm not as bullish as other people on their partnership with MoneyGram, because in my opinion, MoneyGram is a shell of what they were, I don't know, five, six years ago, whenever they were in their prime, I do think that this was still bullish news for XRP and bullish news for MoneyGram. I, I think this was a solid partnership all around because it will definitely open up XRP to more of the remittance market, which MoneyGram holds, and it will definitely help MoneyGram stay in the game with cryptocurrency. I'll keep you updated. Last piece of news, KuCoin is bending the knee. They are kissing the ring of Binance. KuCoin lists Binance coin, supports Binance chain projects. So many US residents especially are wondering if what they plan to do with their BNB if Binance shuts down, if they don't want to hold it in any, 
I mean, where would they sell it if they wanted to make a profit off it? And KuCoin is looking like it'll be that solution. KuCoin will reportedly offer BNB trading pairs with Bitcoin and Tether. The announcement also notes, so, so this is happening. This is not speculation. This is happening. The announcement also notes that KuCoin will support projects based on Binance's native blockchain, Binance chain, in addition to its native coin, BNB. And you can only imagine that KuCoin wishes they were as successful as Binance is because you know Binance is not listing KuCoin's projects on their exchange. I don't know. Let me know what you think. If we check back on the price right now, it seems that we have dropped down from 10,900 and we're right and we are right back at 10,700. So all around bullish day. That's the video for today. My name's Austin. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you want daily updates on the crypto market and like always, I'll see you tomorrow.